Hi, welcome to Nishcraft. My name is Cassie and I'm your host. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about a site called VIPCrossStitch.com. Now, before I begin, I just want you to know that I have a lot more that I'm going to be talking to you about, but this is the most um, important thing in this video. Um, but if you want to know what's going on with me, what items won in the giveaway and all of that kind of stuff, you're going to want to stay tuned. So anyway, um, I'm talking about VIPCrossStitch.com, which is a really nice company that contacted me and asked me if I was interested in cross stitch, would I like to get some of their items for free? And I was like, oh, that would be so awesome because my, my daughter loves cross stitching. And she has told me, you know what? You need to get into cross stitching. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I already crochet. I hear that cross stitching can sometimes be, um, you know, it can be difficult in some, like the really fine um, motor skills, you know, but um, I decided to take her up on her offer. So I asked for three items. The first item is this cross stitch that I got. This is for my daughter. So my daughter recently got a new kitten and it is a gray tabby and she really loves it. So I thought the first one I could go ahead and, and give to her and when she completes it, I can share it with you guys and let you know what she thought about it. But so far, it looks like it's really um, well designed. Um, it's you know it's simple but it's a lot more challenging for her than what she's had before so um i'm looking forward to giving this to her she doesn't know that i have it yet so <laughs> so i'm really excited about that um the second thing that i got um was this cross stitch that features all the different um months and it's like a scene with um cottages in different um, months. I thought that, you know, if I was going to do, do cross stitch, I may as well do something that's really um, pretty, you know, pretty extensive because it might be the only time I do it. I don't know. Maybe I'll fall in love with it with like my daughter does. I do know that my daughter's probably going to want me to order from this site again, um, which I would, by the way. Um, and I just wanted to mention their shipping is super fast. I didn't realize that they were going to be a really fast shipper, but sh but they were, at least in my case. Um, so I wanted to mention that. And then the third thing that I got was this. Um, it is a bookmark cross stitch and it only has seven colors in it, as you can see. Yeah. And I'm gonna add this to my next giveaway. So, um, one of you guys is going to be able to get this once um, my giveaway winner is picked. So, how can you enter the giveaway? No worries, I'm gonna post it and I'll ask for you to comment back with, you know, an, an answer and then I will um, find I will sort by comments and all of that and I'll make sure that if you answer the question then you're entered and then I will do the drawing on the date that I say I will. So um, before I segue into more items that are going to be in that giveaway, I do want to let you know if you visit that site VIPCrossStitch.com you will get a 7% off discount if you put in NicheCraft07. Now don't worry, you don't have to remember that. I'll have it um, posted in the description along with the links. And um, I won't just give you a link to the store, I'll also give you a link to each one of these items so that if you want one of the ones that I've shown you, then you can um, go ahead and get that one instead, all right? Okay, so um, again, I just want to, you know, mention it was really nice of that company to get a hold of me and to give me these items for free, especially considering how much my daughter loves to do it and how I've been curious about it. And um, I told them, you know, um, if you send this to me, I, you know, I told them what I'd do with it. I said that, you know, I would put one of them in a giveaway and all of that, and they were fine with that. So, um, just so you know, <laughs> that's what's going on there. So, are you ready to find out some more items that are going to be in that giveaway? All right, so let's go ahead and take this, and I will put it in the winning bag, which was a Paisley bag. So, you guys, of all of you guys that responded... <coughs> And um, it was by about four votes, um, the Paisley bag won. So this is the one that we're going to be putting into the giveaway. So um, again, look for that coming up. And of all the different Cotton King pastellos, 
just um, showing them to you so you can remember what they look like. Of all of them, the one that won was the lavender one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the bag as well. So you guys already have some stuff in that bag that you know you're gonna get in that giveaway, okay? One of you guys is gonna win it. Um, that said, all the rest of these um, Cotton King Sultan Pastellos, um, since I have plenty of them, I'm going to go ahead and put them in my stash for my mystery boxes. And so, just so you know, the next four people who order a large mystery box for me on um, my Etsy store, um, and they will be on sale. And just so you know, um, they will get one of these. So just so you know, if you still want to get one of these um, Cotton Kinks um, Pastello and you maybe would rather not pay um, Hobie prices for it, then just know that um, I'll be putting those in my next mystery bags. Um, so I have a little, I have a little like thing of, you know, all the different you know, all the different things that I want to talk about here. So, um, I think, I think, um, the next best thing to say, um, just so everybody's in the know <laughs> is that, um, believe it or not, we actually had another death in the family. This time it was on Greg's side of the family. Um, it was one of his uncles who we were really close with, um, his grandchildren and our children went to the same preschool growing up and uh, back when they were really little <laughs> well, they babysat a lot for us and um, you know his aunt has always been wonderful to me his uncle had always been wonderful to me and their kids um, who were Greg's cousins have always been sweet to me as well um, it was really sad but Greg <laughs> who is a Kennedy right He's Catholic on both sides. So um, whenever there's a event that happens on his side of the family, it's like this huge reunion as well. So not only were we dealing with the grief and the, um, the memorial and all of that, but we were also um, seeing people that we hadn't seen, some of them in like seems like 10 years or so so there was that kind of stuff going on as well so i did want to let you guys know that at this point <laughs> the only thing that's going to stop me from posting to the channel is if there is a death in the family because seriously i'm not <laughs> you know i'm not just sitting over here not doing it basically i'm in a great place emotionally um yes it's sad what happened but i you know, I, I know where I am with my grieving process there. It was not unexpected. It was something that had been going on for a while. Um, so in, in that sense, it was a little bit easier. Um, but it's, it's never easy when we lose people we love, you know. But basically, you know, I'm still in a really good place. Um, well, my hair isn't. That's why I'm wearing this cap. I'm having a terrible hair day. So I decided to put on this. I, um, either Greg or Anya, my daughter, I think it was my daughter who knit this on our knitting machine. And it's an Addy. I think I told in one video, like a long time ago, that I had a Centro. It's not Centro, it's Addy. I have a, I have the Addy, the, the biggest one of the Addies, but I don't have any of the other ones. Um, so anyway. Um, she made that for me and if you guys want me to do a demonstration on the Addy um, I might not be able to do it because I'm not very good at that thing but maybe I could talk my daughter into doing it because she's got it down you know my daughter's really artistic um, very musical very crafty just like um, her mom and dad <laughs> but um, you know I, I just when it comes to that Addy for some reason it's just I'm not, I'm not good at doing it. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that piece and let you know that that was something that we were dealing with. You know, of course I saw my in-laws um, and a lot, I mean, just a lot of people, you know, so that was what's going on there. Um, so now that I've said that, I want to talk to you um, a little bit about some of the content that I'm going to be putting out. We know that there's going to be a giveaway, and I'm so sorry I have not gotten that up yet. All I have to do is put all the items on my table and film it. Um, 
You guys, my table, the, the one that I usually use when I show you guys the end result of my yarn dyeing or when I'm doing a tutorial, I don't think it's going to be big enough for this because like I have so many items that I'm going to be putting in this um, giveaway. So really, um, I promise I've got a great giveaway for you and I all I have to do is record it and put it up. Hopefully I'll be able to do that sometime this weekend. Just know um, I'm going to run it for a while so enough people will be able to enter it. Um, so uh, just just know that. Um, also, you know, I mentioned that I am going completely native with our um, yard. Um, I think that I need to kind of edit that a little bit. We are going 10% non-native and then 90% native, okay? Because there's a certain things that are growing in there um, that, I, that I really like, <laughs> you know? And I just can't say goodbye to my hibiscus tree, um, for example. But they're, um, you know, we're completely changing all of our 5.5 acres um, into natives only basically or we've got 10 percent that are non-natives and it might even be less than that like greg really loves the daylilies um and i really like the um hibiscus so <laughs> those are our non-natives that we have i can't think of anything else that we'd put on there that were non-natives unless it was like a european flower in the butterfly garden um because i don't know if daisies um are native to the United States or if they're native to Europe only. Um, I know that they're in the aster family and they're asters from both countries. So, you know, just, <laughs> just so you know, <laughs> those are some of those things. But um, I wanna start filming garden content. Now I don't wanna go overboard, okay? But what I thought was that it would be fun at least from now until, um, the growing season which would be in the spring next year i could just do a week in my garden and just show you some of the things that i'm doing some of the you know and it won't be a really long video it'll just be either a presentation style or i'll just go out with um the camera um maybe i'll be able to film some really cool um wildlife in our garden um i might be able to give you some tips because i do know that we have some poison ivy growing and we need to get rid of that and we we know different methods to get rid of it but you know maybe that might be something that i'll film but just some something short to go up each month because i spend so much time doing it already right <laughs> Um, I also wanted to let you guys know, um, because I've actually had some people ask me by sending me email how my cat is, a little black and white cat. Um, he's doing great and he has a kitnip box, which is a monthly box that you can get for your cats. Um, there is a link in my description, um, that's, it's an affiliate link, you know, where you can order yours if you want to get a monthly subscription box. We have multiple cats in our, um, household. So, um, when we get it, it's like we let baby have <laughs> the whole box and then the next, the next month, um, we take all of baby's toys except for the ones that he really likes because sometimes there's going to be one that he really likes and then we take all of the toys from the last one and we um put them we give them to the other cats and you know we just keep going and <laughs> doing that so um he does have a kitnip box he wants to do he was sitting in front of the camera for a really long time yesterday and i was like what are you doing and he just looked looked at me like mommy i really want to make a youtube video so I've got to do that. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm just looking at my, <laughs> I'm looking at my um, little notebook. Um, and I think that I'd like to transition from here into, um, just chatting. Okay. I just want to talk to you guys. I just want to talk to you about some of the stuff that's going on with me. And I don't know if this is something many of you are interested in, but this is just stuff that I've been thinking about stuff that I've been doing and one of the things that i want to talk about is books so um i'm one of those really avid readers um and so far i've read over 50 books this year which is um kind of like a record for me um for the past couple of years i track it on goodreads for those of you who wonder like how do i know that <laughs> um so for the last couple of years i have been um reading about 60 books a year 
like naturally um, and my goal is always 50 so I bumped my goal up this year to 65 and it looks like I might be able to bump it up even higher um, to maybe 75 or even 100 um, because I've been reading so fast and I wanted to share one of the books that I've read um, now I I'm sharing this because so far this year it's my favorite book that I've read and also because I think it's pretty accessible. Um, there are some, I mean, this is, has layers in it, okay? Um, it's, it's, but it doesn't make you work so hard as it's just very engaging. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And it's a relatively new book. It came out in May. It's called The Ferryman, and it's by Justin Cronin. Now, normally I might not have a physical book to show you, but um, Greg bought this for me um, when <laughs> when all of that stuff was happening. He got this for me. He knew that I really wanted it, and um, it was really sweet of him. So this this author here, he wrote the passage, which I have not read all the way through. I'm, I'm actually reading it right now. Um, but the passage was really, um, oh, it was... It was really popular um, when it first came out as well, and it got a lot of good reviews. Um, and it's it's kind of science fictiony, but it's accessible science fiction. It's not like so far out that it's difficult. Because um, I know sometimes science fiction can be difficult because it includes so much technology and so much so many different kinds of biological ideas sometimes and stuff like that that it can be kind of boring for some people. Um, so the passage was, in my opinion, it was kind of like Michael Crichton. For those of you who remember Michael Crichton, it reminded me a lot. Um, now, a lot of people are going to say Stephen King, but it actually reminded me more of Robert Matheson, who was a predecessor to Stephen King, um, or Richard Matheson, in, in case I, I actually accidentally said the right word, the wrong word. Um, but anyway, um, that that's all I really have to say about it because I haven't finished it. Um, but yeah, The Ferryman. This is a really interesting book. Um, it's hard to classify it and it's hard to talk about it because there are a lot of twists in this book. And um, because of that, it's difficult for me to want to say something because it might ruin it, you know, and I don't want to ruin it. So I'm going to just talk about it a little bit from just a straight up, like, just, just non-spoiler and everything like that. This book is very psychological. Um, it's not a, th a psychological thriller so much as it's just very psychological. It goes into um, the sub the unconscious, the subconscious, and semi-conscious. The semi-conscious is kind of like you're aware of it, but you want to push it down whenever it comes up to the surface. Um, so, um, you know, we're talking about dreams and, and um, you know, moments where the unconscious comes to um to our minds right um we they are also talking a lot about um class struggles um it talks it's very human it all the characters are very very human it's also um somewhat of a sad book in that it has um some elements um of grief in it and it it's, it's hard to kind of classify it exactly like post-apocalyptic or dystopian, but I would say it, it meets both criteria in, in certain ways. And so in a dystopia, there is a system that's set up that is different from the way we live our, our, our normal lives. And in, in the system that's set up is that people, um, can go there there's there's an island there's there's three islands one of the islands is where all the rich people live one of the islands is where all the poorer people live and um the third island is where people are reborn <laughs> so the the ferryman is referring to the man who when people get um, old enough to where they um, either don't have enough health to continue living or they want to retire or just, you know, no longer be alive anymore. Um, he is the person who puts them on the boat to take them out to the island. And on the island, they wipe their memories 
and they um, are able to restore them to like 100% health, they're great. And then they come back as um, adolescents that then um, the couples on the rich side um, are able to adopt. Like I said, on the poor side, those are the people who work really hard. Um, they, they are hard workers. Um, they're a little bit more creative. They, they, have, they have a lot of passion um, and, and things like that. But I haven't even touched upon like, all the things that I love about the book. And I guess that what I love about the book is that there are different levels which you can read it on and it's all valid. Um, there's just a depth to it that is difficult to explain. Those of you who are fans of Inception, okay, um, another movie Killian Murphy was in, I know that Oppenheimer is really popular right now, please don't spoil it for me. Um, those of you who are familiar with Inception would really like this book, so just wanted to tell you a little bit about that. And while I'm on the subject of books, now you guys know why I put a bookmark in <laughs> The bank. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Book of the Month Club because I've always had that in my description as a link, you know, um, but I don't think I've ever actually talked about it. So the link is um, obviously it's a it's a book club that sends you a book once a month. OK, but it gives you about five to seven books that you can pick from. Um, or you can skip, you know, you don't have to always get one. Um, and they send it, it's monthly, but if you skip, you don't have to pay for your month, right? Um, so the link that I have back there, it, like down there <laughs> in the description, um, you click on it and you can um, go and sign up for $5 for your first month. Um, another thing which really cool is that once you sign up, if you don't like the book, you can return it and they'll give you a refund. So that's also really nice. Um, so after you get your first month, then it goes to $16.99 a month. And, you know, um, you can continue to get books or maybe not. But if you want a nice new, um, because all of the books of the month are new releases for that month, okay? If you want a nice new book and you want to stay on top of things and you want some really amazing reading, I would suggest... Um, going to book of the month um, to supply your reading needs. <laughs> you know, I know a lot of you guys, because we're crocheters, we're knitters, um, probably listen to books on tape a lot. And so, you know, there's that too. I understand it. But uh, these, these are all um, physical. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this book. I haven't read it yet, and I'm really looking forward to reading it. Um, and I <laughs> I even have a little bookmark in here. <laughs> um, that's funny because I didn't see it when I when I put it here to talk about. So this is one of the book of the months. OK, um, it's called Clytemnestra. And that name might sound a little familiar to you because she was one of the players in the Greek um, legend of the um, Helen of Troy. Now, I'll tell you who Cly um, Clytemnestra was. So Helen of Troy was married to a guy named Menelaus and she was supposed to be so beautiful. And she left Menelaus in favor of um, this guy named um, Paris, okay? Like, and Paris was supposed to be super hot, but he was really full of himself okay I'm, I'm <laughs> I know I'm not using like Grecan <laughs> words to describe it but it's true he's supposed to be super hot she was into him um, but he and he was also very arrogant and like did not have any of the positive qualities that Menelaus had um, now Clytemnestra she was the sister-in-law of Menelaus she was married to Menelaus's brother okay and believe it or not Menelaus wasn't actually the person that started the Trojan War no the guy who started the Trojan War was Menelaus's brother um, Agamemnon he was very upset and shame and felt shame for what Helen had done and so he decided to go across the ocean or the, the sea there and fight and so he brought, he brought Menelaus with him. Clytemnestra was his wife. And I also believe that Clytemnestra was one of Helen's um, sisters, but don't quote me on that. I'm pretty certain if my, if my, um, 
if my Greek ballads are, are up to par, then that, that's also another aspect of, of Clytemnestra. Anyway, this book tells the story of the Trojan War from the perspective of Clytemnestra. Um, and I really love those kinds of female perspectives because um, we always hear about these stories from the perspective of men. And while that's great, I mean, there's nothing wrong with men. Um, it's, it sometimes neglects um, the important roles that women play in history. And I, and I understand this is a legend. Maybe it really happened. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. Um, but um, she is an iconic character and her story is told in this book. So just wanted to let you know what kind of books you could get from the Book of the Month Club. And also this, you can add this to your Book of the Month as a bonus book if you want to. Um, so I just also wanted to say that too. Um, every time you pick a Book of the Month, you can, you pick one Book of the Month, but then you can add bonus books. And um, you can add this one as a bonus book too, if you're interested in that story. So, <laughs> I've talked about my bookish things. I feel really wonderful about that. So the last thing I want to talk about, and just indulge me, okay? This is just me having a chat with you guys. Like, I'm ch chatting with a friend, okay? <laughs> so I'm just trying to connect to you and just tell you some of the things that I've been thinking about. So one of the things that I actually have been keeping up with lately is the um, Long Island serial killer. Now. I'm, I'm not going to be saying anything. Um, I'm not going to be talking about the crimes. Okay. So I wanted to mention that up front. Um, Rex Hewerman. Um, he's the person who they have a probable cause to arrest. He is innocent until proven guilty. And I want to make that clear. Um, um, but there's a lot of compelling evidence that he's the person who perpetuate, who, who perpetrated these crimes. Okay. There are multiple crimes, obviously. Um, as he's considered a serial killer. Um, so in psychology, there are certain um, areas of psychology that has more to do with this kind of stuff. And when I got my degree and I started working in the workplace, one of the things that I did was I worked for um, a forensic psychologist. I also worked in risk assessment. I worked in... Um, I actually did a project with prison inmates and I also worked with child trauma victims. So um, some of that might not seem to have a connection to this, but it really does. And I just wanted to tell you some of my predictions. I'm not saying that this is true. It could, I could be totally off and wrong and all of that, but I just thought it would be fun because I've been thinking about this a lot. And I think that it's important um, to just, you know, kind of share ideas with people. And so I wanted to tell you some of my predictions as somebody <laughs> who has a little bit of experience here. You know, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't currently work using my degree. So I just wanted to make sure this is clear. This is just me talking to you. And again, I don't want to be a kind of person who doesn't make it clear that this person, Rex Hewerman, is innocent until he's proven by a court of law. And I'm saying that because our justice system, it's so important that we treat it with the respect that it deserves. It gets things wrong enough. Um, and one of the things it does get right is that you you are innocent until somebody, until they are able to prove that you're not. So obviously if you or one of your close friends or relatives was to be arrested and falsely accused you would want people to consider them innocent until proven guilty um, even if the evidence is very compelling like it is in this case so if Hewerman did commit these crimes this is what i um, predict um, so first off i believe that his mother was very over like overbearing and while this hasn't been confirmed by anybody, I believe that, um, he, you know, he speaks fondly of his father. Um, I believe his mom was very overbearing, probably abusive. She was probably abusive to his father as well. Um, one thing about his um, life that I think was very important is that he experienced some trauma when he was a child. That's where the child trauma plays in. And um, in child trauma victims, you get all sorts of different responses, but one of them is this 
deep anger. Um, and that's why it's important that tra child trauma victims have some kind of way of working that out psychologically. Um, when he was 11, his dad passed away. That's a very young age to lose somebody who's pivotal in their in your life. Um, I believe that his father, they, I've never seen um, the reason why he passed away, but I believe his father was probably in an accident that involved a car or involved moving um, from one place to another because I feel like he blames his um, mother for his father's death. And the reason why I say that is that from what I understand, the mother being overbearing, the father was probably passive. Most people who are in those kinds of dynamics, there's usually one who wears the pants for lack of a better word, and I believe his mother did. Um, I believe the, the father was kind of meek sometimes and um, maybe even passive. And maybe it was something as simple as the mother asked him to go out and get something from the store or something like that. And he went out and he was killed maybe in, a, in an accident. Um, or maybe his father um, went through a whole bunch of stress and then he went got ill. And maybe um, Rick Sewerman thought that that stress was brought on by his mother. But I believe that if I was to make a prediction, again, you know, this is just, I'm just talking, um, I would say that his father probably died in an accident or had an illness that could be related to stress. So um, I believe also that when he was younger, so the age of 11, which is pre-puberty, but it's right on that cusp, okay? And, and we know that Rex Humor is a large person. He might have been pubescent at that time, um, and that can bring up some other confusions. But given the people that he committed crimes against, if he's guilty, which he's not proven yet, um, I, would I would postulate and predict that either his mother had a whole lot of different partners as she was trying to get um, another man in their life and he didn't like that um, and he felt that she was maybe a loose woman or maybe she did become a woman of the night and that became one way that she was able to support her children because you know Rex has a younger brother as well or no it's an older brother by a couple of years but just they're very close together in age so um did want to mention that. Sorry, it's a younger brother. I just remembered he's a middle child, so so I wanted to make, mention that. Um, I believe that his mother might not have abused him in a um, physical way. Um, it's possible, um, but I believe that she probably um, neglected him a lot. Um, now, when you're a single mother, it can be very difficult to be present for your children. Um, that's that's neither here nor there. You know, um, when if a child feels like they're neglected, then it's the same as them actually being neglected. Um, that's something in psychology that is um, kind of difficult um, for some parents to deal with when they have a child that feels like um, something happened when it really didn't, like nothing like that did. So I do want to say, um, I believe that his mother was negligent to a degree that you and I would be able to be like, wow, that, no, <laughs> you know, for example, maybe she took a night job and she wasn't there overnight um, and him and his brother were left alone, for example. Um, I think that his first offense if he offended in um, in an age that is more typical for a serial killer was either done in 1994 or 1995. Um, 1994 would be the year that his first wife um, and him got divorced. I don't know um, why they got divorced, but I would predict that maybe she found another man. That would be the kind of concept of abandoning because he's got abandonment issues with his dad because anybody would though, okay? Um, because his father died when he was young. Um, he might have abandonment issues with his mother if she left him alone. And um, when him and his first wife in 1994 got divorced, um, he might have had an abandonment issue there. So I did want to um, mention that. So um, there's two more that I wanted to mention that are, this is 
you know, there's just one more prediction and then there's a comment that I want to make. Um, I do believe that there will be multiple um, homicides that will be attributed to him if he is guilty, if he is a perpetrator um, outside of New York. So that's, that's just what I wanted to say about him. Now, there's a, um, there's a um, thing that people have been saying in the, in the media a lot about this person, and it's starting to bother me. So I just wanted to kind of throw it out there and see what you guys thought, um, if you're still watching. If you're still watching, thank you so much for just being my friend and listening to me blab, okay? Um, but I think one thing they keep attributing to him is him being really obsessive, right? Well, I don't find him obsessive. I don't think that if he's the perpetrator, I don't think that it's strange for him to look up information about the crimes he committed. That seems like what pers a person would do if something that happened to them that was significant. I know it's messed up, okay? I understand we're talking about stuff that's really, really offensive and terrible, but understand that this person doesn't think like the way that we do. He does not have empathy, um, assuming that he's the perpetrator. Um, a person who does things like that does not have empathy, does not have the same humanity um, or quality of humanity that we do. Um, so just understand that for him to look up stuff about these people, um, or at least look up about the investigation, okay, I do believe that that has um, it's just like the same thing as um, a sentimental person um, looking at pictures of their wedding um, or looking at pictures of their first grandchild or their first child. You know, that is something that's really significant in your life. And so you got to kind of think in a twisted way to get there. But I don't think that he was obsessing over the investigation. Um, I think that he is controlling and probably paranoid but I don't think that he's obsessive. I would not um, connect that to him. Um, and I, I also went, I just thought of something, you know, I, I also wanted to mention, you know, they say he's a pack rat, which is a nice way of saying hoarder. Um, given the amount of stuff that he had compiled, you know, and even the stuff that he had gotten rid of, he didn't really get rid of. So like he had the truck that he, that he ended up selling to his brother. So like he kept it close, right? Um, I just think that that's a, a sign of trauma. Um, oftentimes people will, um, start keeping a lot of stuff when they experience a death. Um, and, uh, I'm just thinking I've experienced a lot of deaths lately. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, I think that especially him acquiring the house that he grew up in and all of that kind of stuff, you know, um, I think that he's, um, traumatized but that's not an excuse I'm not saying you know well he's not obsessive he's traumatized like one's better than the other I'm not saying that I'm just saying that I think certain words sometimes get thrown around and um, some people don't realize that if you're going to talk about it and if you're going to use scientific words like obsessive which would mean obsessive personality disorder or something like that I don't think that um, obsessive is the right word. I think tra like he ha he's obviously traumatized. Um, he probably would never admit it though. Um, and he obviously has control issues, anger issues, those kinds of things. He might even have some paranoia. Um, if he has any mental illness, and I don't believe he does, but if he did, um, other than being a trauma victim, um, I would just say that he might be on the schizophrenic side, on the paranoid side, because um, of some of the things that he's done to try to cover up his crimes, making sure. But I mean, you know, people say, oh, well, they just want to get away with it. Well, I mean, every criminal wants to get away with what they're doing, you know, or most of them do. Um, so him trying to cover up his crimes is a very human thing to do as, as much as some people don't want to see him as human and that's i mean i understand that but i mean i'm just trying to talk about a person this guy and what i think about him so anyway i feel better because i made a video for you guys and you're gonna see it and um you didn't have to look at my nasty hair <laughs> my hair just looked weird today i don't know and it was nice to talk to you about books and about true crime and remember um the cross stitch stuff 
Um, I am trying to get this giveaway up for you guys, so you can um, rely on that coming out very soon, too. Um, as far as I know, there are no other deaths scheduled in my life, so um, I will be with you guys um, daily. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. Again, I really appreciate it. You'll find all the links to what I've talked about in the, um, in, in the description. And if you want to know anything about Rex Hewerman or that case, um, I would suggest um, just searching for it, you know, um, try to find some press releases about it because the, the press releases are actually good and it contain a lot of information. Um, try not to listen to too many talking heads because, you know, some people like to conjecture, <laughs> conjecture, you know, deal with people who just talk about the facts, you know, that's what I would say. Anyway, that said, thank you so much for watching to the end. I will see you soon in another video. Bye.